Hi, my name is Tom Lee and I'm one of the founders of Simpler. I'm here today to speak to researchers who focus on the healthcare space. And I want to take you on a brief tour of Simpler Signals, our subscription-based social media analytics platform that's been built from the ground up specifically for the field of healthcare. And as you can see, we're a web-based platform and we've got many different reports and filters and options for being able to extract the data and insights that you're studying. So let's start off by focusing on a community and exploring that. I'm going to choose the hashtag LCSM as an example, uh, lung cancer social media, and then I'm going to choose a date range. And I could go back six years or more. I'm just going to choose the last 30 days for our purpose. And I'm going to choose this network analysis, which is where I like to start when I'm first starting to explore a community that I'm not familiar with. It gives me that initial view of who the participants are and how they're connected to one another. And in this case, on this network graph, all of the nodes are individual Twitter accounts. And those that are a bit larger and darker in color are accounts that are more central to the network. They're being spoken to and spoken about more often, being mentioned on Twitter. We can look at this in a variety of different ways, too. You know, the, the, the lines in between them are actually arrows, and they're pointing. They're showing what the direction of communication that's taking place between these parties. And I could choose this uh, different things up here, this detect communities algorithm. This here will help us to understand where there are some sub-networks within the larger networks, those parties that are, or groups, I should say, that are, are more closely connected to one another than with others. We could also look at the healthcare stakeholders uh, uh, algorithm, which will separate these into these 18. You can see this, this legend on my, my right of my screen here, 18 different stakeholder categories. And it really helps to understand the makeup of the, the group and the conversation. You know, we could hover over this and see the doctors are the green nodes and the patients are the red nodes, or we could toggle all these off and just, you know, key in on those groups of participants that we're most interested in. Um, we also, you know, we're looking at a mentions algorithm here. We can look at this network in different ways. We could apply an authority algorithm or a hub algorithm. Again, depending upon what your, your uh, individual needs and, and uh, desires are in, in your research. Perhaps what you're interested in is comparing uh, multiple hashtags uh, over time. So I'm going to choose lung cancer, and I'm going to add one more. Let's do asbestos. Some somewhat related conversations that are going on here. I'm going to choose the tweet activity, and we'll leave this set at days. And what this will do is take a look at the conversations on each of these individual hashtags and which ones are, are you know, being used more often than others and, and just kind of get a, a comparison of them over time. And so we see that this orange line is the asbestos conversation, the black is lung cancer, uh, the light blue is the LCSM, which happens to be a tweet chat, and we can see the spikes in the graph here on the days when they have that tweet chat. Um, different things we can do, we can also you know, move away from a line graph and we can just change the look of this to a spline as an example. And this is very typical. You know, we'll start out with a large graphic at the top of the page here just to kind of wrap our heads around the data, so to speak. But we understand that you're researchers and you want the raw data. And so if you scroll down, we will always provide you with that raw data that makes up the report. And at the very bottom, value-added bonus here, uh, you can you see this big green export button. You can very easily export into a CSV file uh, for further analysis. Perhaps uh, what you're interested in is, um, is looking at locations, you know, where these conversations are taking place and where the individuals are from. And we can do that in a variety of ways. So picking this locations and time zones report, we start out with this, this global map and, and the darker colored countries on here are where there's you know, greater concentrations of uh, participants in this conversation. And I can hover over any one of these and see the number of participants. And for example, if I click on, in this case, the United States, I get an option to see who these users are. And when I click that, I'll open up a new tab in my browser. And then we'll again start with this large visual up at the top here, which is a, a pie graph of all the different stakeholder mix. And I could choose you know, to click on one of these slices and just explore that uh, category, in this case, doctors. Or I could scroll down and just look at everybody, uh, you know, regardless of who their stakeholder or what their stakeholder mix is. And this is ordered in a number of uh, by number of tweets. Now, what we did when we clicked on that map, we actually automatically applied a filter, this mapped locations filter. And you can see that now we're only looking at tweets from people that are in the United States. Well, we could take that a step further, and I could choose instead of just stopping the United States, I could choose the state of Washington. 
and uh, and take a look at that. I could take it you know maybe even further down. You know, just looking at the city of Seattle or something like that if I wanted. But I'm just going to leave it at, at Washington though for our sake. And uh, here's the breakdown the of the stakeholder categories. If I scroll down, here's the individuals from Washington. And anywhere in our system where you see a Twitter handle, you can click on it. In this case, I'm picking on Janet, and uh, we'll get some additional information about her. And we have these value-added buttons, and this one right here, for example, Show Tweets. If I click that, I'll open up yet another tab in my browser. And this time, I'm looking at a personalized transcript of everything that Janet has contributed to the LCSM discussion during this 30-day period that we're currently looking at. We can learn a lot more about you know, where her interests lie and what's important to her and what her points of view are. Um, let me just close off a couple of these here. Uh, you know, perhaps something you're interested in is, has to do with information exchange, links. There's lots of links to articles and things on the web being shared on Twitter. Some of them good, some of them not so good, but we can explore all of them. And uh, maybe just to make this more interesting, let's add a filter. Let's only look at links that are being shared by patients. And just to make it more interesting, we'll add a word filter. So we're only going to show links being shared by patients when they mention the word risk in their tweet. And let's see what those are. And so when we run that report, here's our answer. And um, it's this URL right here that will actually capture from Twitter. And then you know we can see here that it was shared 41 times by patients when they were mentioning the word risk. Um, but we don't stop with the URL here, as you can tell. We actually have robots that will follow that URL out to its end point and will grab additional information that's available. So if it has a, an image, we'll grab the image, we'll grab the article title, meta description, and this topics, we actually do content analysis. We will crawl the body of text on that page and we'll return the seven most frequently used words in the article. So again, very fast way to be able to dive right down to what it is that you're interested in. You know, we were looking at articles here uh, that's being shared by patients. Another way of looking at this, I'm going to shift over to looking at doctors. And rather than looking at specific articles, maybe I'm interested in looking at web domains. What are the most frequently used uh, or, or referred to websites by doctors while using this hashtag? You know, these are they're trusted sources of information. And we can real quick and easy be able to find that out. Just to maybe shift completely away from what we've been looking at, uh, take away LCSM for the moment here, and I'm going to shift over to TCT 2016. This is a conference. It was actually an interventional cardiology conference that took place um, in late October and spilled over into the first week of November. And maybe this was your conference, and you wanted to take a look and see what the activity was uh, that, that, that took place at that event, or maybe even you know compare and contrast it year over year. So we're still looking at doctors right here on this stakeholder. Uh, let's see what, in this case, at this conference, what the doctors were talking about. So I choose a words report, and it's actually a word frequency. And I can see what words are most frequently used by doctors at this conference in their tweets. And we have this bubble graph where the larger bubbles at the center are the most frequently used words, and it kind of spirals out you know, counterclockwise then. And I'm just going to pick the word stent right here. We could choose any of these and click on it and see the tweets. And when I do that, again, I'll open up a new tab in the browser. And now I'm looking at a transcript of all the tweets made by doctors when they were talking about stents. And uh, I see lots of retweets in here, which is fine. That's not unusual, especially at a conference. But maybe I want to cut through all that noise. So I can go back to my menu, add another filter. And this time, I'm going to choose retweets. And I'm going to exclude all the retweets. I just want to get down to those original tweets being made about uh, stents by doctors. And here they are. So again, that, that, uh, that quick and easy. So you know, whether it be these metrics or some uh, you know, more, more simple um, quantitative type things, you know, this tweet metrics report as an example, where we just look at the style of communication uh, on these different, uh, different uh, metrics here, you know, retweets, links, mentions, and such. You know, what percentage of the overall tweets were retweets? I can choose to drill down on that and bring up a retweets report and see what the most frequently uh, uh, retweeted um, tweets were at this, this event. Uh, and, and, you know, to be honest with you, we could go on and on, and uh, I can go into much more detail, but I really just wanted to give you a sense of the possibilities. And for your next research study, I hope you consider leveraging Simpler's data and tools. 
Take care.